Well, hello, folks. Welcome to Here's the Deal. What's going on, friends? So much to talk about. You there, know, it was a big week for softball last week. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. on Friday, you know, I was prepared. I, I kind of had shut off my brain uh, to, like, breaking news. I just thought it was going to be, you know, just a regular, just a regular week, off-season week. Regular you know, day. Yeah. And then, boom. The hammer dropped. The hammer dropped. Twice. Twice. Twice it dropped. On the same same day, and I was, like, not even prepared for it. And Ches did not get to leave work early on Friday. No. She sure didn't. No. no. She was working till the wee hours of the morning. Thank you. She was doing, she was doing work <laughs> to bring you the deal. Yeah, totally. But a um, couple things we're going to talk about. Um, just so you guys know, we're going to talk about the hire at Auburn. Mm-hmm. Got Mickey Dean. New coach. Big news. And the second thing we're going to talk about today is um, Patty Gasso contract some more extension. Big news. And then we're going to do some kind of uh, comparative analysis. So you guys know, kind of like, almost, I would say the disparity yeah. in, uh, in pay amongst some of the top coaches in the Talking country. Talking money today. Talking folks. about that money. Yes. But let's start with uh, Mickey Dean, hired as um, Auburn's new head coach. Sarah, your initial thoughts. I love it. I like the hire. I think it's a great hire. He was at uh, Radford, and he was super successful. And he was at JMU, and he was super successful. Mm -hmm. Smaller schools. Uh, what he did at JMU was uh, actually what he did both at Radford and JMU was unprecedented for both mm -hmm. those schools. Uh, but everybody knows his recent success at JMU. Um, I love the hire. How do you feel about it? I mean, I don't think you get any better than that. You know, you talk about Mickey Dean, who's been in five consecutive NCAA tournaments, four conference titles, three tournament titles. And, you know, JMU has always been that team on the brink. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last three seasons they've been in the top 25. Um and 27, yeah, 2017 was the first time in program history that they won back-to-back -back conference titles. Um, every year that he was there, he set single-season win records. Yeah, folks. absolutely. Every single season, they just kept winning more and more games. Mm -hmm. um, and he got Megan Good Yeah, I mean, talk about polishing there. a player of the year coming out, yeah. of, uh, coming out of that conference. I mean, it's kind of unheard of. It, they kind of remind me of Gonzaga, like in basketball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good comparison. Mm -hmm. Very good comparison. Um, I think, I've, uh, you know, I feel for JMU. Yeah. Because you like to, you like to see some s disparity. Right. Right. Amongst these uh, conferences. We talk week after week. It's like blue in the face, SEC, Pac-12. It's all Power 5 all yeah, the time. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so nice to see a program that uh, came out of the woods, literally, and were beating some of the top 25 teams. Mm -hmm. And you want to see those teams thrive. And it, it really stinks because, I mean, very close clo close story is uh, Jess Callister leaving Minnesota. Right. A program on the brink, and then they go and leave to bigger conferences. Mm -hmm. You know, career-wise, career like, I understand. Yeah. I just uh, yeah, feel, I feel for those programs that like, you know, they were attracting some really strong athletes yeah. across the country and uh, making a lot of noise. And it will be interesting to see what happens with JMU. I don't, I don't know. I've never met Mickey Dean. I don't really know much about him in terms of like his personality and mm -hmm. everything. Do you think he's going to be a great personality fit for Auburn, especially coming in now with what they're dealing with? Do you know him? I don't. I know that he has a similar haircut to my father. Okay. Uh, hey, I wish we had a picture of Mel. Yeah, I really... Mel, I know you're not watching because you don't do <laughs> social media, but Mickey Dean's kind of rocking the same flat top. Yeah. It's, a good, you know? it's a good softball coach cut, Right, it's opinion. just... It, it fares well in, you know, different types of weather. Yeah. It's, it's raining, it's going to stay flat, it's going yeah, to exactly. keep the shape, exactly. it's windy. You're not going to get hat hair. Uh -uh. Nope. No, nope. it's going to survive. Hat, but my dad doesn't Mickey wear Dean... We like the haircut. Yeah. We give it a thumbs up. Strong choice. Classic. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about? 
<laughs> I believe we were talking about if Mickey Dean's hair was going to make it in Auburn. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it will. You know, That's okay. The in all seriousness, um, I think Mickey Dean is a great fit. Now it'll be interesting to see um, the assistant coaches that he mm-hmm. chooses. Um, but I think I don't think there's another candidate out there who would be more fitting. Now realize this: Auburn still has the number two recruiting class mm-hmm. going into the 2017 2018 season. This team is extremely talented, not to mention that they returned two veteran pitchers in Michaela Martin. Right. And um, it slips my mind. Uh, come on. The Rachel... other one. No, no. She graduated. She graduated. Uh, um, no. Kaylee. Kaylee. Yeah. That we'll get one. you. Yeah. We'll figure Sorry. it out. There's a lot of. I'm getting over a cold right now. Well, it actually just started this morning. but um, <laughs> So she's getting a cold right I'm now. I'm getting a cold. Been, been so they have strong pitching. Mm-hmm. Now they do lose uh, some strong offensive players in the lineup. But I feel confident that like this team right now is ready to turn things over. I can't yeah. imagine them wanting to stew in their own like drama for too long. I think for the most part, all those girls who committed to – Auburn wanted to go there and win a national title. I mean, we've seen how quickly that they've turned around. And even amongst the drama that we saw Mm -hmm. towards the middle to latter half of the season, they still played really well. They They still made it to Super Regionals. They still played really well. They they ended up having a great season. They could have made it to the World Series. And and, uh, it'll just be interesting to see what happens. But I feel like with Mickey Dean... um, They all have the same mentality. Mm -hmm. I know for him, I don't know him personally, but I would imagine jumping to this SEC program, like he has his sights on making the World Series, Mm -hmm. period. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see some more Auburn athletes leave, you know, now that they've hired, uh, now they've hired a head coach. Do you think they're, you know, do you think that recruiting class is going to come in? With Mickey Dean, that number two, do you think some are going to decommit and go elsewhere? Well, I think what's going to happen initially is Mickey Dean and staff are going to evaluate the current commits on Mm -hmm. the list. So there'll be an evaluation period, and whether Dean feels that these players are fit for uh, for his program, Mm -hmm. that will really determine whether or not these players stay. Obviously, Auburn's done a tremendous job uh, recruiting over the last handful of years. Right. but uh, it'll be imperative for Dean, especially with the top recruits, to secure secure them yep. and their future um, looking ahead. I'm personally interested to see what happens with the Snow Sisters, right? Mm-hmm. So you had uh, Tannen, yep. who went to Washington, and she decommitted to go to Auburn to play for Myers. Yeah. Now Myers isn't there. What's going to happen? And then her little sister, Taylin, is should be a freshman this year, correct? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm interested to see. Those are two really big, big-time names coming in. For him, I'm interested to see what happens with those. Yeah, two. I know. I mean, it's there's going to be an adjustment period for sure, mm-hmm. but I don't think we can answer that right now. Yeah, you know they they're just it, they just met. Right. Know? Exactly. No, I so, get it. I get it. I'm just so saying I want to see what happens. Yeah. So if it's a good fit, you know, um, coach player wise, I could see them, you know, continuing on uh through the to the end of their career but i don't think we can really answer that right now do you think there's any chance that megan good would transfer um no she's a senior i think she's already invested into the jmu program yeah um but i mean that's an interesting question that you that you bring up interesting question people i pose it to you on social media is there any chance that megan good would transfer out of jmu would that be some news? That would be some big news. I hope it happens on Friday again for you. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Freak out Friday. Uh, but what is what does Dean need to do to be successful this season? Um, obviously, stabilize uh, the coaching staff, and really, um, if you watched his press conference uh, with Auburn, that was something he kind of hammered home that like he's going to create a culture by design which I think he's done successfully mm-hmm. at Radford and JMU. So I can't, I mean, I would imagine he would lay down the same blueprint that he's uh, designed at the last two programs. And uh, really, I think, I think 
one thing they're gonna have to he's gonna have to create a really safe environment for these kids they've been through Agreed. a lot yep. so much drama and I would imagine that that creates a certain amount of distrust within the team so it's it's going to be imperative for them to reestablish that trust amongst each other and if things need to get aired out they need to get aired out and then left behind because this program needs to be all about moving forward winning and doing what it takes to be champions will they be a top 25 team this year i don't see why not will they be a women's college world series team i don't know i don't know i think what will be interesting to see is how they fare in february yeah that would be i would love to see i am excited about that part because i mean it's like the kickoff Mm -hmm. right cross conference matchups uh, World Series matchups, and I think Auburn has enough motivation going into this season mm-hmm. to to make a strong push because in their mind they're just going to prove everybody wrong. Yep, you know they have nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited. Um, they certainly can be a top 25 team and should because yep. they have two veteran pitchers mm-hmm. on, in the circle. Yeah, and I think they had I think they had great leadership from their seniors last year. You know, you think about Casey Cooper, she's a real deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know she didn't set up the season that we all thought she was going to have, but she's like a solid captain. So I'm wondering if some of that will kind of trickle down into their, you know, into their team and it's going to carry on this season. I don't know. I feel like this team is going to have to reestablish who they are. Yeah. You know, they're going to have to form a new identity and um, still maintain, like, who they are. But as far as, like, who who, is Auburn softball going to be in the next handful of years? Yeah. Um, Obviously, I would imagine that (laughs) they're going to try to become drama free. Yeah. You know, Um, but we'll see. Yeah. I think their senior leadership is going to be important this season. Um, On the flip side, what does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean for James JMU? Um Wow. Still got Megan good. I know. They will be good this year. If you saw their numbers last year, they were very successful. Um but I mean, you lose your head guy. Yeah. You know, he led you to the promised land and you did everything that he asked. And then, like, he's no longer there. What does that do to the dynamic? And um, it'll be really critical for JMU Mm -hmm. to to hire somebody of the same caliber of Mickey Dean. Because, I mean, they were building so much momentum. Mm -hmm. And you would hate to see any of that slow down. Um, But I don't know who that hire is going to be. I don't know either. And that's that's what I'm waiting to see. We've already seen a lot of the new hires. Mm -hmm. So... It's like, a little bit late point, in the game, yeah. right? Who's it going to be? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, will it be as... Who's it going to be? Yeah, who, tell us who you think Tell it's us who's be. it going to be. Brittany, do we have anything, anybody saying anything Not about, about this. this, but Zachary Hancock thinks Auburn will be a top 25 team, okay. but they will not make it to OKC because there are too many other elite teams. I see you. I see you, Zachary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad suggestion there. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely going to be top 25, yeah. without a doubt. I don't see why not. I don't know? see any reason why they wouldn't be. It'd be interesting to see who they put behind the dish. Yeah. I mean. With Car- yeah, with Carly gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's a, and then you've got pretty much, uh, well, actually, I would imagine uh, Taylin taking over one of the middle positions mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. It's all very interesting, folks. I think we've said interesting about 50 <laughs> times in this conversation. It's all very interesting, and we're all waiting to see what happens. Yeah, um, I, Megan Good's a senior, mm-hmm. and I would expect her to have, you know, her best season ever. So we, we got to see who he fills his staff out with. Mm-hmm. Do you think Scott Woodard, Woodard is staying around? I don't know. I think the way that Auburn has been moving, mm-hmm. I feel like they're trying to, like, leave that behind as yeah. quickly as possible. But I don't know. I should just ask Scott. It's a long timeline, folks, mm-hmm. and... We'll unpack it eventually, but uh, right now we're Mickey Dean's the head coach, and mm-hmm. we're wondering who's going to be the assistant coaches. Yeah, let us know who you think is going to be JMU's uh, new head coach. I need to I need to sit and yep. think about that one. Yeah, that's a tough one. Well, we know one thing: 
It's not going to be Missy Lombardi. No. No. <laughs> we know that the Oklahoma staff is staying where right. they are, yeah. and Patty Gasso will be in Oklahoma until 2024. Yep. Uh, man. Whoa. Whoa. Million dollars a year through 2024. Patty Gasso. Yeah. Making, it, Making rain. it rain. Making it rain in Oklahoma. Holy crap. Greatest coach in Big 12 history. Unequivocally. There's no the, debate. Is she the best coach ever? What do you think? Hmm. I know. That's how that was my Wow, we didn't discuss we didn't pre-discuss this before the show, so I don't have an I answer. I kind of just um, threw that out there. Man, maybe. Are you talking about Sue? You got you got 11. You you got it, yeah. Really and, 12 because that one. Right. So you I don't know that I can't put her above Sue. And yeah. that's 11 Slash twelve is just, hard to get to. I'm just throwing up the just, throwing out the discussion. I see you. I see you. Uh, top five. Oh, for sure. Top five. Not even a question. Top, top five. five. Top five. Top five. Patty, you got to get a couple more to beat Sue for us to, you know, kind of give you the definitive number one mm-hmm. here. Um, she is killing it in number one recruits. Let's talk. Let's talk about that before we talk about money. Okay. Um, she has the number one recruit in the 2018 class. Mm-hmm. Brooke Vestal. Yep. The 2019 class. Kenzie Hansen. The 2020 class. Jada Jane Coleman. Coleman. 2021 class. Quincy Lilio. And she had the 2017, correct? No. Number one, she did not. Scratch that. Just four, <laughs> not five. That's no big deal. UCLA had the... Tw- UCL had the number one. Mm-hmm. So that's four. Uh, and those are all upcoming. And she won in 2016 with a bunch of freshmen. She won 2017 with a bunch of sophomores. Um, I think she's going to win in 2018 with a bunch of juniors. So it's just, it's, she's unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so when you talk about Dynasty. a million, you, when you talk about a million dollars a year, mm-hmm. um, that's a lot for a softball coach. It is. Because as we know, we did a little digging. Really nobody sniffs a million dollars right nope, now. Not even close. No. Mm-mm. Not even I think close. the the highest we saw was somewhere in the threes. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about a lot of money, but you're talking about somebody who is is building a legacy and a little bit of a dynasty here. Uh, if she can win three in a row, you know, Tim Walton had a great two years there, and they were going for a three-peat um, in 2015, didn't quite make it. Uh, and, you know, we all thought Florida, and Florida was right there with them. Mm-hmm. You know, they second last year. I think this team's better. Um, I do, too. I do, too. But, uh... The only thing that would stop Oklahoma from winning another national title is, is Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Patty. We're putting a we're putting a big target right in your back, but it's already there. Everybody knows it's there. You've won two it's in a row. It's just the truth. Um, it's just the truth. I mean, they know that. I mean, pound for pound, player for player, who matches up with them? Right. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> it's crickets in the studio, folks. Uh, nobody, nobody matches up with them. So, um, you know, whether you want to make the debate that athletes and coaches shouldn't be making what they're making, that's a separate debate. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think a million dollars a year is unwarranted, given that we're in the United States of America and we pay athletes and coaches an enormous amount of money every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think this is un. I mean, it's unprecedented, but I don't think it's. What do you think that means for the sport itself? I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's very. I think it's especially a good thing for women coaches in the sport. Yeah. Um, not that you know, I don't want the male coaches to also succeed. You know, Tim Tim Walton, Pat Murphy, Mike White—they're all great coaches. Um, but there's a huge. De- it, it's not a debate as to whether there's a disparity in pay among female athletes and coaches in this country. It happens. It's it's, it's a fact. So I think it's a good thing. I think it's a very good thing for female coaches uh, in college right now um, to see this kind of money to see to see Oklahoma make this kind of investment in a coach uh in a softball coach I think is a very good thing Mm -hmm. for the sport in general and for female coaches in the sport and for aspiring you know players who want to be coaches someday I think it's I think it looks I think the outlook for softball is very good Mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing now here's the most important question oh okay I thought that was the most important question what would you do with that million dollars oh man I have no idea Brittany? Um, I'd probably buy land 
somewhere. Of course you in would. In like Patagonia. Yeah. And go live and in just like go a hiking. Tiny all the time. Yeah. Wow. Chaz, you would totally come visit. <laughs> yeah. Don't even. I know. Yeah, I you would. would. I would I not. Would. Um, <laughs> Sarah's not into nature. Not. I never want to see I'm not Sarah into again. Nature. No. That's what I do with my money. Exactly. Yeah. Go somewhere remote where they're just like outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I do love me some cars, mm -hmm. some convertibles. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'd upgrade my Mustang a little bit. Okay. And by upgrade, that. I mean get a different one. Yeah. <laughs> would you buy a lot of dogs? I would. I would buy a ton of. I know because you got to rescue. You got to rescue, rescue Brittany. Well, so you I rescue a lot of dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I don't know. I the car comes to mind first, or mm -hmm. some kind of sick modern house in California or somewhere exotic. Oh yeah. Get out of here. For sure. <laughs> I don't know, Chess. What would you do? Even I don't know how far a million dollars would take you for a yeah. beach house in California. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's true. like it's <laughs> a good point. May have Real to get talk. a beach 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 house down in Galveston maybe. Real talk. Um yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It is only a yeah. million dollars, you folks. Would, it's not that would, much money. You would get a shanty. Yeah, it's a true story. <laughs> um, wow, Chess is crashing my dream, like just no, destroying just, my dreams. It's just a reality. I know the property tax alone check. would probably it's just be a reality check. My California people, you know exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. That's why I don't live there anymore. California people, <laughs> I love your state. You can barely get a million dollars. Like, what does that even do for you in Austin anymore? True story. True. Mm. Wow, you guys are just crashing my dreams. Yeah. Sorry, Sarah. You know what? We're not super impressed with Patty's million dollars anymore. Yeah. <laughs> then we quickly realize. What, what's yours? What's yours? Um, wow. I would definitely um, invest in like either a townhome or a condo someplace like in Europe. I, yeah. would, I, would, I would probably go that route. Yeah. Um, versus yeah. Brittany's Patagonia route. So yeah. we could like, you know, take vacations yeah. Brittany can come visit me in Amsterdam. I can go to Patagonia. You can do like a little Airbnb swap thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'll just be driving everywhere yeah. in the convertible. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Running out of gas. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nobody really likes what I'm doing with my million dollars. Um, um, no, but a huge congrats. Mm -hmm. Um She's oh, been hugely successful. About, and we were already talking about this before. The oh, show. yeah. We're not done. I'm just okay. saying congratulations. Yeah. Um, congratulations, Patty. Hey, we've, got a, we've got a good question oh, from okay. Danielle. She says, does Gasso retire after 2024 or will she keep going? Well, she's entering her 24th season mm -hmm. in 2018. So six more seasons. That would be 30. Um, Dang. <laughs> We're not trying to age Patty at all here on the show. Um, 30 you seasons. Look great, Patty. I don't know, man. If, if she wins like three or four more, 30 years coaching, I mean, I, ha can, I can't even imagine speaking for Patty. I'm not going to, but I imagine if I, you know, 30 is a nice round number to go yeah. out on. Uh, right. I think, um, you know, since I've, I've been on that coaching end, it all depends on your love for, for coaching yeah. at that point. Like, she can't accurately assess how she's going to feel mm -hmm. um if she still loves coaching and still has more to give i think she does it and she's getting a great opportunity to coach with her son right yeah, so that's cool. i mean that's probably a dream of any a bigger question parent when she retires does jt inherit i mean it's certainly the OU dynasty didn't everybody think that was going to happen with auburn isn't yeah. that what everybody thought was going to happen mm -hmm. with auburn um it certainly seems possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the trajectory. He's having a great this season. He's had three years. He's having a great kickoff to his career. Man, I wish I had me some of that. Yeah, Mel. I, I might Mel? have been still coaching. <laughs> uh, Wasn't going to coach on that salary. No. Mm -mm. Uh, do we have anything else coming in? Well, Danielle just commented that she needs at least four more years from Patty because she has a twenty twenty four. Oh, so that's why she. Okay. Asked. Oh, so those are that's a selfish question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Danielle is uh, planting a selfish little. <laughs> we see you, Danielle. We see what you're doing. Yeah, we see what's behind that question. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, we don't blame you. Nobody knows. I don't even think Patty knows. But yeah. um, pros and cons. Yeah. But I think you nailed it. Just where she is. So who's the second highest paid uh, female coach? Uh, well, we didn't do an exhaustive. We didn't do an exhaustive search. I know, we're still we're still digging. We're still digging, uh, but it seems as though uh, Heather Char mm -hmm. at Washington. But you're talking about a fraction of the money. Yeah. 
uh, a fourth to be exact. Um, so it, it, do you think everyone gets raises, raises in like the next couple of years? <laughs> because we're having, because we're talking about this. No, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, I was a little surprised that nobody was kind of sniffing that number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, we have to look a little bit more. Um, but I was expecting to see some others in the four to 500, thousand range um so it's a it's a huge jump what was right. she at she was at like seven something she went from four something to seven something to a million yes. um but that's what happens when you win championships and you have a university that is willing to invest in you as a coach and in, invest in the sport you know football football coaches didn't start making fit five million dollars when football became like there was an investment on the university's part college you know coaches had to be successful so Not it to mention uh patty it's her 20 she's going into her 24, 24 season. four years 24th uh, season that's a that's a lot of time yeah that's a, yeah that's a good consideration to think of so um yeah it's it's sports do not get to the level that football is at without investment um so any kind of investment in softball we here at flow softball are excited to see so this is exciting I'm excited. Well, I'm really excited about your use of the word. Exciting. Exciting. We're excited and interested, people. Yeah. That's what's happening. That's the deal today. We are interested <laughs> and we are excited. Sarah's really mixing up the adjectives today. I am. <laughs> I am. You're welcome, everyone. Um, anything else, Brittany? Social. Uh, so we have a lot of love for Patty Gasso. It doesn't matter if she three peats, she is still the best coach in the sport. That comes from Wesley Cook. Okay, Wesley, we see you. Um, Oscar says, if Oklahoma three peats this upcoming season, I will put her at number one on my list. So, of all time? Yeah. I, yeah. Nobody in nobody since the Women's College World Series became a three game series. Uh, best of three series has three peated, uh, and I think uh, UCLA was the last one to do it in the '90s, in the early '90s, I think it was. Um, so she will, if she does three peat, she will be the first coach in the modern, in the era of uh, best of three women's college world series to three peat, which is um, significant, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Anything else? Danielle comes back with another question. Do you think Tim Walton and Florida give Oklahoma problems this year? I mean, they they were able to give them problems last year. <laughs> um, you lose, to, to me with Florida, it's their pitching staff. You lose Gorley, but you still have Acasio and Kelly Barnhill, yeah. who is, I mean, that those two together are better than a lot of staffs, you know on any other team so mm -hmm. i certainly think that pitching their pitching will give a lot of people problems this season i think what's interesting is that we had talked extensively about florida being a, a team that wasn't a strong offensive team last year but they went off like gangbusters when it came to like mm -hmm. the world series they showed up and the freshman class that they have coming in adds a significant amount of offensive power to the Florida Gators. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if we're going to see more of a balance between their pitching and offense this year. Yep. Yep. That's our, those are our thoughts, Danielle. Jeff wants to know if Patty is in y'all's top five of all time. Yes. Oh, without a doubt. Yes. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, we're hesitating, number one, because of Sue Enquist and her 11 titles, officially uh. 11 titles. Um Man, I don't. She might be, might be top three. Yeah, and she takes the best be headshot. Have you yeah. seen her headshot? <laughs> Man, I, it we, looks I, so I good. really need a headshot of Patty Gasser right now yeah. popping up. It looks so good. Um, good job, Patty. Patty, well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? We got anything uh, we else? We have a completely unrelated question. Okay, okay. we want to hear that. We're okay one. with unrelated questions. Tim says, "At what age do you start putting videos and stats together for recruiting purposes?" Is this like he wants our advice or yep. is he asking us what uh, he wants advice? advice. Coach Chez? Ah. <laughs> I hate to say this, but um, the way that I've seen kind of like the travel ball and recruiting landscape uh, transform, I would start in seventh grade. It's crazy to s for me to even say that, but um, even this past weekend hanging out with like the Texas Blaze. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, many of their top players who are eighth graders were on their mm -hmm. like unofficial visits. 
So I, w- I yeah. would start just forming that at seventh grade and then especially document things uh, in the eighth grade. Sixth grade, I don't know how legit those numbers are going to be, but seventh grade is when I would start. There's a reason we rank, we have 2020s ranked and we're, we will rank 2021s. It starts that young, you know, love yeah. it or hate it. Like kids are going on un- un- officials at that age. Coaches are looking, you know, it, it happens. Yeah. Coach Chez, seventh grade. That's what she's saying. Seventh grade. Sorry, guys. Damn. What else we got? Um, I think with that, that's a good leeway. It's a good talking segue. About, it's a talking segue. about into, yeah. That is a perfect segue. Into mm-hmm. our 2020 Hot 100. Woo! Chez is very excited <laughs> about that. Yep. Excited and interested, folks. Remember, excited. that's what we are today. Ex- interested and excited. And um, interested. <laughs> it starts today. It starts today. And um, I think y'all are going to see a lot of new faces. Um, You're going to see some players move up and down compared to last year's 2020 Mm -hmm. um, Hot 100 rankings. We added uh, a new contributor to Hot 100, Amanda Freed, um, who we're excited to have and uh, get her input on the 2020 um, Hot 100. So very excited. This team, uh, this team, this uh, Ranking class class. <laughs> is very strong. Mm-hmm. Lots of great athletes um, that play multiple positions. Um, really, really strong class. So that'll be dropping this afternoon. So stay tuned for 2020 Hot 100 as we start our countdown. So today you're going to see 100 to 91 mm-hmm. of the top 2020 athletes. Mm-hmm. As we mentioned a little bit ago, if you're kind of just joining us or joining us late, uh, Oklahoma had our number one Hot 100 2020 player uh, when we did these the first round, uh, Jada Coleman. Um, Do you think she'll retain her title? She's a stud. I think she could. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen the rankings, so I don't know. Um, Have you seen the full list? I have. Chez knows. Uh, without giving away the farm, Chez, what's the biggest surprise? Like, what's your what's your biggest or your biggest takeaway from the list? Um, a lot of the kids, not a lot. Um, there's some kids that we saw at the bottom half mm-hmm. of the Hot 100 jumped up. A lot of movers. Yeah, and then um, some of them dropped down. So there's kind of like some shuffling going on. Mm-hmm. Which, based, is, which based, I would think is based normal. On, yeah, based on performance of this past summer. So, and then we saw, uh, I think, really, I mean, sorry to bring up Oklahoma again, but Cripes, they've got some strong, strong athletes in the 2020 class. Like Besides Jada Coleman, yeah. Tiara Jennings, Zeta Pooney, I mean, right there. Those three alone. Those are some of the top recruits in the nation. Yeah, and yep. they have like three of them. Yeah, Patty's it's Patty's like killing crazy. the uh, Patty's killing the recruiting game. Um, like we mentioned, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, she has our top recruits. Um, but uh, if you're into Hot 100, we have a Hot 100 live show. Uh, what day is that? Thursdays? It's usually Thursday, but Brent's getting married this weekend, so Yay. he's not going to be there. On Thursday. On Thursday. Oh, man. So, so we haven't... we're, we're uh, still working that out. Okay. It might be Wednesday afternoon. Or so still... if you want to hear all things Hot 100, our Hot 100 live show. Mm-hmm. Mr. Eads is getting married yep. this week. Congratulations. But I think Chaz will be there. Brittany will be there. In spirit. <laughs> Maybe we can Facebook Live. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anything... anything uh, on social about 2020 hot 100 not too much going on right now all right i think everyone's looking at the site because they're so excited yeah i think our (laughs) studio guy needs to get lunch Mm -hmm. (laughs) we could just keep him here all right folks well thank you for joining us on here's the deal Um, and we gave you the deal the deal was that we're very interested and we're very excited (laughs) yes (laughs) and tune in next week as um maybe the adjectives will change yeah we don't know maybe we'll be knowledgeable yeah, but uh, <laughs> interesting and knowledgeable. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. go. There it is. All right, we'll see you guys next week. All right.